podcast episode 13. Um, my guest is Maurice Littlejohn. If you're there, I'm I'm not sure. Okay. okay. Here we go. All right. How are hey, you? Good. How are you doing tonight? I am great. I'm glad to have you here tonight. All right. Looks like I had to be a little fast relate the host had to, had to let me in. So, but I'm here. So good. To <laughs> well, if you don't mind, Maurice, do me a favor and introduce yourself. Okay. Yeah. So I am Maurice Little John. Um, I'm the third brother of the Little John brothers. Um, yeah, Rico. Uh, my brother, Dr. Carlos Little John, was here on the show last month. So I'm rounding out the crew uh, of the Little, Little John brothers uh, and married with two kids, MJ and Kendall. So that's me. Okay. Well, Maurice, um, when I had Carlos on, I talked about a little bit about like y'all growing up and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, what shaped it and molded you into the man that you are today? I would say really um, just watching my mother, how she she raised us, um, you know, of course, with the help of um, our, our father and, and, you know, really a community. Um, okay. Just seeing how she had to raise us, uh, you know, help us to be men um, and then watching me and my brothers, how we banded together and always there for each other. Um, and of course, with, with school and just doing well in school and seeing that there was something more outside of what I saw outside um, in, the, in, the, in the streets and things like that. So I think that's what helped mold, mold me to uh, what I am right now. So, OK, I asked Carlos what school was like. For him. So I want to ask you the same thing. What was coming from Little Africa to Spartanburg like for you as far as the school change? It was a big change. Um, I think just walking into McCracken Junior High School, uh, my eighth grade year, it might have been the first or second day of school where I was I was late to class because McCracken was a lot bigger than Chesney. And I was running through the hall and I and I and I knocked down Miss Hilton. Like uh, but that was like my favorite teacher. I thought I was getting like so much trouble because I was running the hall and I knocked down Miss Hilton, but she became my favorite teacher. Um, you know, I would always go talk to her, but it was, it was a big change, but you know, after, you know, a few weeks, you know, it was like riding a bike. So, but McCracken, uh, did make me mature and grow up a little bit more than it did in, in Chesney. So it was good, good overall experience. Then from there going on to Sparmer high school and on the Clemson university. So when you got to Clemson, um, what did you initially want to do? Or are you doing what you set out to do? So when I first went to Clemson, I started out as every other engineering student. Um, as being a general engineering student, it's pretty much they put you in a pool of every incoming freshman who want to be an engineer. So you have to take chemistry, calculus, um, physics, everything all in one semester. And it's pretty much what, what it does is weed you out to see, do you really want to be an engineer? Mm -hmm. And for the first semester, first two semesters of Clemson, yes, I really did want to be an engineer. <laughs> so, you know, so I stuck it out, but I think that the second semester of my freshman year was probably my worst, worst college semester of my college career. Because I think my grades were a B, a D, mm -hmm. A F and a W, mm -hmm. which is very uncharacteristic for me. So at that point in time, my mother, Linda Little John, said, Boy, get a degree in something. So I was like, Okay, I right, let me reverse course. <laughs> so I switched my major uh, to graphic communications and I stayed in there for like a semester, but I was I was in there with some some packaging, packaging science students. And I always know I would still want to do engineering. So that was like, well, you know, packaging science is just like engineering, it's just you're not you know, building roads or bridges or, you know, working with electronics or being a computer engineer or mechanical engineer. So you should check it out. So I switched. Around. So I think I took some classes in packaging science the next semester and um, I did pretty good. And so I was like, you know what, I'm switched to packaging science. And from there, I went on did internships in Chicago with Kraft Foods and um, and I pretty much liked it. So here I am today. Um, I'm a packaging engineer and I've been doing packaging engineering for about, I don't know, let's see, 
16, 17 years now. So, so that's what wow. I do. So I'm wow. still an engineer, just not a traditional engineer, but I am an engineer, a packaging engineer. So <laughs> nonetheless, you are still an engineer. Yes, I am. A, I'm an engineer. So I know my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to ask you, um, being married, being a father, and then with the job that you have that sometimes takes you out of the state and out of the country, how do you manage to keep everything in line? Uh, it's really communication. Uh, me and my wife, Shanique, she, uh, she keeps, she keeps things in order when I'm out of town or out of the country, traveling to work. And then of course I got my, my guy, MJ, you mm -hmm. know, my namesake, you know, he's like, he's got to be the man of the house when daddy's out of town. And, you know, then I got the boss, the little boss lady, Kendall, <laughs> that makes everything, everything else is straight. So, uh, but it's fun. I mean, they don't like it when I have to go out of town sometime, but you know, as long as it's in the States, they're good. But when I have to go, when I've been to France or Germany for work, um, it did get a little, it, it is a little difficult because you got the time zone, uh, you know, time difference and things like that, but we make it work. And, um, but it's uh, it's but like I said, it's all about communication. Just communicating the whole time, make sure everybody's on the same page and the same schedule. So we're good. So I want to ask you, um, from a a black father's standpoint, what are you doing with your kids that you feel like you missed out on growing up? Well, I would say first of all. Um, with MJ, um, he's heavily involved with you know with basketball. He's uh, with travel basketball, AAU basketball, um, uh, recruiting stuff, recruiting visits, going to colleges, um, camps, and things like that. So that's something that I didn't do growing up uh, mm -hmm. because it really wasn't it wasn't as re readily available, um, you know, when I was coming up. So that's something that you know we've always said that if you whatever dream that you have, whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. we'll foster it and we'll make it happen for you because, you know, we always tell them that what we, we just give you the foundation. What we have right now, this is the foundation. You got to, you got to build up from here. And the same thing with Kendall. Um, she's gotten this with basketball and things of that nature. So even with gymnastics early on. So we've always tried to foster their dreams and, you know, and help them reach their goals. So that's something that, uh, opportunities weren't there growing up for me. Um, so we just want to always help them reach their goals. In the same way that I shouted out Carlos, I have to shout you out in the role that you've played in my kids' life. Like you've been there for Deontay as well as Deja um, in, in ways that is just like so humbling for me because, you know, with Deontay, um, I'm not good at math and yeah. I know that you are like the mathematical genius of the family. So I would always send him to come to you. And he has an admiration for you and Carlos that is beyond compare. And I thank you for never, you know, treating him like he was just a, a step nephew or what have you. And the same thing, with Deja, you know, you both have been a major role, almost like a second and third father for her. And I thank you for that, too, because, you know, a lot of girls, you know, are put out here and they don't have the father influence that they actually need. Um, not saying that Rico hasn't been an excellent father, but it is that extra push mm -hmm. to give them what they need to get to where they're going. So I thank you. And I tilt my hat to you for always being on standby for them. Um, we watch you with Kendall and MJ and the same way with Carlos with two. Um, Y'all are fabulous fathers. Thank you. Um, your children are beautiful. Um, very respectful. And we couldn't ask for better nieces and nephews. So, you know, I, I have to tilt my hat to you with with all of that, you know, with being a great uncle as well as a great father to your two. Yeah, I mean, like with, De with Deontay, I mean, he's always been, you know, he's always inquisitive. You know, he, mm -hmm. you know, 
he's never shied away from coming to me, asking me questions about things. I've never been, I never sugarcoat anything for me. I always tell him real advice, you know, whatever he needs to to know or hear, I tell him. Um, so I never ever looked at him as just, you know, a throw in. Right. You know, he's, he's, he's family. You know, he's my nephew. So, uh, you know, that's why, you know, that's my guy. You know, whenever I, you know, I talk to him every now and then, you know, just to make sure he's good. Um, so with him and Kay, you know, make sure everything's good. So and same with Deja. I'm probably the, the stern uncle, I would say. Right. Because I don't, like I said, I don't sugarcoat. If you don't want my opinion, don't ask me. So, right. Because I'm pretty blunt. So, but I think they appreciate it. Whether they it's good or not, but, you know, but it's, uh, it's just something I think that, you know, with them being young and, and growing up that, you know, you rather hear it from family than to hear it outside of family. So right. I'll always be one to, you know, to tell them the truth. And right. Not it. So. I always say that you and Carlos are the uncles that um, help mold Deontay into the man that he is today. Um, as you know, that when he was younger, he wanted to play basketball. Mm-hmm. And um, it just wasn't meant to be, you know, for him. And I thank you guys for showing him that, you know, you don't have to play basketball to make it. You don't have to play football to make it in this world. You can use your brain for something else and and make it. And he's doing well for himself. Like, he has the opportunity to have his own Verizon store right now. So, you know... I thank you guys for loving him in that way and, and getting him to a place that I, as his mom, a female couldn't do. So. Yeah. I mean, with, but, like, with D, I mean, he's the kid is good. I mean, I know he's not a kid, you know, he's a woman, <laughs> but, but he's good. I mean, it's just like whether basketball worked out for him or not. I knew D was going, going places. I mean, you gotta be a student before you athlete because no matter what sport you play, the ball is going to start dribbling. The ball is, you know, football, you're not going to be able to run it as hard or, or you know, so, you know, you got to have a second, you know, a second option. Um, and like him, he he took advantage of education. So mm-hmm. that's, that's the thing we instill with our kids, you know, is, you know, it's great to be good in sports, but you're a student first. And so right. we push, we push A's around here. B's okay. We try, we want, we want the A's. You know, because, you know, like I said, they, they play sports and they're good at it. I give it to them. They're, they're really good at it. Um, and they're going places with that. But we want to, you know, we want to have the icing on the cake. Is The sports are icing on the cake. The ac- academics come first. So we have our first question. Um, your brother wants to know how tall MJ is now. MJ right now, he is between 6'4 and 6'5 right now. He's 15, so. Makes absolutely no sense <laughs> yeah. how tall he is. Yeah, to be that young, but I mean, yeah. granted, none of the uncles or you are short, so I mean, that yeah. height just blew, blew my mind. He get it from somewhere, you know. He's, you know, he's not that. Uh, he's not the little. Uh, I guess a little chubby baby he was when he was a baby. You know, right. people thought he was gonna be short, chubby, but. Some kind of way, he grew a little bit. He grew on. He's still growing. He got. He, he grew got a lot of bit. <laughs> growing, growing. He, so he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a basketball player. So, so look out for him. You heard it here first. So look, I keep looking out for him. Absolutely. Um, what are you doing as a father to mold and shape their dreams for their futures? Um, really the biggest thing is just keep talking, keep pouring into them, talking to them, you know, letting them know that, um, the only limit is you, you limit mm-hmm. yourself. You just got to keep pushing through whatever brick wall that may be in front of you. Just keep pushing. Um, because only person who can stop you is you. So right. that's the biggest thing that I keep pouring to them because I look at the fact how we grew up, um, not with a silver spoon in the mouth, more so a wooden spoon. So mm-hmm. we had to, you know, we had to work hard for everything we had, you know, despite, you know, sometimes like, man, is it worth it? But, you know, it's worth it. You look, we, I look at where we are now, what we had to uh, 
persevere through and it was worth it. So I tell the kids that, you know, we we sacrifice me, me and your mother, we sacrifice for y'all to have what y'all have. So take advantage of it and um and keep moving forward. What shaped you with your childhood that kept you from going left? I mean, it would have been real easy to take those losses and continue to lose, I guess, would be, you know, what what motivated you to stay straight and, and move forward in the opposite way? Uh, the biggest thing for me is um, I'm not built for jail. I'm not built for the streets. Right. <laughs> so, and and I did not want to face Linda Little John. So she always let us know that, hey, if you get in trouble, don't call me. So that was enough for me to not go left. I mean, just keep keep going straight on the straight and narrow. And um, I said, it's it's plenty of it's plenty of examples out here of what not to do. It's not mm -hmm. a lot of examples of, of what the right thing to do. So right. I just always knew that I wanted to, to do the right thing. And I wanted to be more than what I saw outside my window or outside right. the street. So, I mean, Spartanburg is a great place you know, to grow up in the upstate of South Carolina, but I knew I wanted to make a bigger impact somewhere else with my life um, and, you know, have a platform for my kids to follow. How did your brothers impact your life, being that they're both are older than you? For me personally, uh, so as you know, with me, with me and Rico, you know, he's the older brother. You know, Rico is a man of few words, as you know. Mm -hmm. but, no, but what, Rico is a person that, he leads by example and you kind of sort of just you have to kind of sort of just watch his movements. You have to watch what he does and how he does things. And, you know, that's the thing I picked up from him, just watching how he, how he conducted himself. I mean, he early on with, you know, him being the father with, with Deja, you know, I was still in um, my I was a freshman in college. Uh, actually, the summer of going to college is when Deja was born. Mm -hmm. And so. Him bringing Deja to Clemson University to see, to see me when she was like a little baby, you know, just seeing how he interacted with her, uh, you know, that they gave me the first glimpse of what, you know, being a, a young father was and, and how, you know, how to, to move with your child. And then with Carlos, uh, him being at Winthrop University, me going up to Winthrop University and, and seeing him when I was in high school and, you know, how the academic side of being, you know, being on a college campus, uh, how it worked. And, you know, I would say me and Carlos, like our academically and some professionally, like our li lives have, have mirrored each other. So even though he's, he's in education I'm, and I'm an engineer, we still have certain similarities, uh, pathways that we've taken in life. Okay. Oh, well, um, I have enjoyed being, a member of this family for 21 years legally. Um, we, I like to say that we grew up together because your mom took care of my grandma. Mm -hmm. And so I got to meet you guys as children. And um, you again, when you came to McCracken. Yes. So, you know, um, I feel like we all grew up together and it's been, you know, one wild ride right after another and like everything that you guys have accomplished we've been so proud of you like you know when you went off to Clemson and we would come down me and Rico would come to get you before you got your first car and stuff like that and um I remember one time in particular we came down there and we had Deontay to knock on the door yeah. And we moved away from the door to see, you know, how you would react. But you wasn't the one that came to the door. Your roommate was. And he was like, who is this little boy standing here at this door? Yeah. But um, it's always fun when we all get together and come together. Um, you know, I'm adopted. And I've oftentimes felt out of place and felt like I didn't belong, but I've never had to question my position in this family. And so, you know, I look at you and Carlos like brothers, like y'all are my brothers as well. So, you know, y'all mean the world to me and the nieces and nephews, they're, they're like the icing on the cake. Yeah. So, um, 
I'm not going to hold you. I just wanted to bring you on and basically shower you with your flowers while you can smell them and, <laughs> and just um, let you do you for a moment and brag on the babies and, and the misses for a while. But um, what would you tell someone um, heading off to college and not knowing exactly what it is that they want to to do what what would you what advice would you offer up to someone that's just confused as to what they're supposed to be doing i mean i would tell them that you know go to college with your eyes wide open um mm -hmm. look around you know feel the vib the vibrations of the campus and the people around um don't be a, don't be a, a, afraid to explore you know anything your first year positive experiences Right. And you're gonna, have some, you're gonna have some negative ones too, but that shapes and mold who you are. So find something that you, you know, find a major that you're gonna enjoy doing where work doesn't feel like work every day. You know, when you get a job that you're having fun, you know, so find something that you feel like when you get up every morning that this is something I want to do. Don't just go find a major because of the prestige of it, because of you know, a doctor or a lawyer or you know, a dentist or something. Like those, those are very prestigious careers, but it also takes a lot of work. Right. So just be sure that whatever you do in life, you enjoy doing it uh, because unless you hit the lottery or if God bless you in a mighty way, you're probably <laughs> doing that for the next 25, 30 years of your life. So make sure you like it. Uh, so, <laughs> and I, I would tell any any young person that just go, Go and just be a blank, a blank palette. You know, right. let, let, let college be a blank palette, a palette for you. And just paint your own picture of what you want your life to be like, and and and, and everything will work out for you if you just follow follow that that path of success. You know, ask questions, use everybody as a resource. I mean, don't be don't be afraid to you know to do that because you are your own business. So you got to advertise yourself right um because you want to make sure that whatever job you get it's, it's the right job the right people that you, you you're around so um so i'll tell them that just have fun too along the way have fun if you're gonna be there four or five years of your life make sure you have fun those four or five years of life don't just go and be a bookworm and and don't you know don't enjoy the ride because uh you got in these real in the real world these bills are real you know life is real Yes, sir. So you would wish you could write a paper or study for a test when you get, you know, they have to pay some bills sometime. So, but it's, but it's fun. So, uh, you know, like I said, just, just enjoy it and um, see what life takes you. I also have one last question. Um, being that mental health is a stigma for, for the black man, mm -hmm. what are you, you doing to keep your mental health intact and the mental of mj how are you guys being able to stay in your right state of mind with everything that's going on around you in this world you know mj that's my guy that's my namesake so we're gonna we talk we talk all the time yeah i'm i'm his daddy i'm his mm -hmm. father you know but i'm also you know we Sometimes we are like we boys or friends, but, but you know, so it's just like we keep those lines of communications open, uh, whatever he's going through, you know, he knows he can always come talk to me uh, about anything. You know, we don't, you know, I, there, there's no conversation that we can't have or haven't had that he has to ever feel uncomfortable uh, come to me about. So, right. you know, and I always let him know that, you know, watch your surroundings, watch who you're around but always carry yourself with dignity because, um, you know, that's your integrity is something that you can, you can lose it real fast. I mean, if, if you don't present yourself in a way, um, to the public and always stay true to yourself and convince others because people are going to say good things and bad things about you, but you got to, you, but you just got to stay, stay solid where you are. Um, I mean, especially with him with him playing basketball and the notoriety that comes from that you know 
you're gonna have your fans, you're gonna have your naysayers when you do good or bad, but you get you just gotta understand to stay grounded and focus on the goal at hand. Don't don't get caught up with everything you hear. So that's how that's we that's great how we sound play. advice. Great sound advice. Thank you. Um I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to come chat with me for a moment. I really truly appreciate you being here with me tonight. No problem at all. It's it's always good to chop it up with family, you know, rather yeah. it be on the camera or not on the camera. If it's on the phone, it's, it's good too, you know. We'll be down there Monday. So we're gonna chop it up. We're, okay. gonna, <laughs> we're gonna do what we do when the brothers get together. Absolutely. You know, so uh, absolutely that won't, be, that won't be recorded. So don't don't worry about it. Will not. <laughs> that is not to be televised. So but it's all in good fun with what we do. Absolutely. A little bit what we do. So uh but yeah, it's always good. You know, I like to give you your flowers of congratulating you, you know, and everything you're doing from being a, a author, you know, Thank podcast. You. I don't know what else is attached to the name, but I'm pretty sure some more stuff coming. So you know, congratulations to you because in spite of everything that you, you went through, you know, personally right. and, you know, growing up, it, you didn't let it stop you. So keep pushing, keep moving, keep being a beacon of, of, of light and hope for people who are going through circumstances, you know, letting them know that you they can speak out and, you know, not be afraid to walk that line. So right. continue to do what you do and don't let anybody tell you different uh because the haters gonna be there just, just shake them off keep moving you're gonna be good you're good you're doing you're doing big things doing positive things so just keep it moving thank you you're welcome i appreciate that so much you're about to make me cry maurice we're not that's doing my, that hey, that's my goal i'm trying to get you crying out <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing that tonight <laughs> no I'm not, but, um, I'm not gonna make you cry <laughs> Again, I thank you for being here with me tonight. Um, this has been delayed but not denied. I chose that name as a title because oftentimes in life we are delayed in, in things, um, things that we want to do, things that we think we need to be doing. But one thing I know for certain is that um, God will never deny what's meant for you. So even in being delayed, you'll never be denied from what God has for you. And so with that being said, um, everybody, good night. Thanks for watching. All right. Good night. Tune in to Delay But Not Denied every second Monday and fourth Friday.